We're serving neighbors and nations, and this is what it's all about. I'm casting vision today of the opportunities that are coming. And so next up, we get to join together and show the love of Jesus to foster care families and to many foster kids. And this year, we're excited to say that the bike build is back. It's Joyride. We're gonna build bikes. We're going to give them away. And this is extraordinary. Pastor Justin, who leads all of our outreach, by the way, phenomenal once again, what you led us in last week. When he opened up for foster families to register for Joyride, it filled up in two hours. So hundreds of kids and families will be here on the third weekend of December for us to express our heart and love for them. We will start the new year so strong. Night to Shine is now going to be an in-person experience again. Thank God. And it will be the largest we've ever had. We already are sensing the momentum toward it. We have maxed out every place. We used a place in Sepulpa. We used uh, the Marriott on 71st. We used our church building here. The unfinished building had a lot of open space, and we used it, but uh, we've got to move it to accommodate the crowd. Are you ready? Here's the venue for Night to Shine. It's all set. The Tulsa Convention Center. It's going to take every one of us, and we're going to step up and show the love of Jesus. I want to tell you that the word that God wants to embed in our heart for the 2023 Neighbors and Nations effort is rescue. We're rescuing people. We're making a difference. In Matthew chapter 28, starting at verse 18, here's what Jesus said. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And notice this next part, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. God loved us so much that he gave his son. Jesus sacrificed his life to offer to you and me the free gift of salvation. The reason it's a free gift is because what he did for us at the cross and by rising again is a completed work. The payment for sin has been paid for. There's now provision made for our sins to be forgiven. Paul said it like this, he became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Paul went on to say, because of Jesus, we can become a new creation in Christ Jesus. That we can come alive spiritually because of the shed blood of Jesus. By grace, we are saved. We put our faith in his grace and our sins are forgiven, but it doesn't stop there. It's important to see uh, the two sides of rescue. The first side is simply that, the gift of salvation. But then as equally important is putting truth with the grace that leads to transformation. Because the Great Commission didn't stop with just grace or else it would be grace heavy and truth light. It came on and said, we make disciples. That people who get saved become followers of Jesus. That this isn't religion, it's a relationship. Talk back to me a bit if you know what I'm talking about. You, you didn't get saved to be a church member, you got saved into a relationship, a life-changing relationship with Jesus. That's what this is about. And in that relationship, you become a follower of Jesus. It's his way over our way. It's his agenda. It is called discipleship. And here in the Great Commission, it says, we get the opportunity to teach for the purpose of obedience so that people can walk in the full expression of freedom that truth brings. Paul said, it's like a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. That's how dramatic the change is. Change over time as that sanctifying work happens in process. So it is salvation and it's 
transformation. It's grace and truth. It is grace that leads to peace. That peace that speaks to the pressure, the anxiety, the past. You not only get saved, there's a wholeness that comes through the perfect peace of God that's part of the transformation that happens as your mind is renewed, as your nature is made new. See, this is how the past is not your future because in Christ, you are a new creation and you walk in that ongoing newness. Yeah, go ahead. Praise God out of your own story because you, if you're saved, you know what I'm talking about. And so we are excited to say that part of this rescue is about being built up so that we can bring in. Build up, bring in. Be built up in your faith. Work out your salvation in fear and trembling and then bring people in that need the gift of salvation and the life change that you've experienced. Do you see the two sides? We are built up, we're made disciples and then disciples make disciples. Something's wrong if disciples aren't making disciples. Jesus said it clearly from the beginning. Disciples make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. The way we reach the lost, this gathering serves a purpose. It'll never be greater than your personal witness, influence, encouragement, and compelling influence on people that you have credibility with. Disciples make disciples. So we want to do something to build on this Bible engagement journey that we started a few months ago. I wanna thank this team. I wanna thank you, church, because you bought in and we have said, we're not going to be comfortable just to, to embrace the word. We're gonna engage the word. We're engaging the word not to have more information. We are engaging the word for transformation. We are thankful that we're still in process, that we're still being changed, still being transformed in the likeness of Christ. We never get satisfied with our present level of spiritual achievement or advancement. There's still another step to take, come on. There's still another level. There's still more to experience of the grace, power, and freedom that is in Christ. So we are on this pursuit to engage for the purpose of spiritual growth. See, the relationship's not static. We are a building, the Bible says, under construction. We are a body and every joint is supplying its resource so that growth happens. We're the bride, it's a relationship, never static, no neutral. We are either actively tracking or we are backtracking and God has done too much. Jesus love is too awesome to take it for granted, become idle, become static, become lukewarm. We are going to be as on fire for Jesus as we have ever been. You know, I believe with all of my heart in the imminent return of Jesus and I believe it's soon and I do not want Jesus to come back for this church in like a, a low grade fever. I wanna be burning hot in love with Jesus, on fire for the Great Commission, doing everything we can to make a difference while there's still time. I want you to know that in order to go even stronger in our confidence in reaching people on the neighbor's side of our vision, on the third week of February, we're gonna host our first cultural moment conference. We are in a cultural moment, and that means we are facing a lot of pressure on our faith. That pressure, if allowed, will create fear, uncertainty, and maybe collapse, where someone, they move through that whole process of just deconstruction of their faith, and they walk away. So that can happen, but I wanna tell you, the Holy Spirit pressurizes your spirit like the systems pressurize the inside of a submarine 
so that the deeper it goes, it can offset the pressure that's on the outside. We can go deep in culture, be in the world, but not of the world. We can go deep in culture with the desire to bring people in because we don't have to allow the pressure to collapse us. It can prove to make us more confident, more hopeful, more urgent, more faithful in our witness of who Jesus is to a needy and a broken world. Daniel was a, a, an influence. He didn't collapse under the pressure of culture. His faith got stronger. I want the same to happen for all of us. Every generation represented. These young people nor any adult in this room. You do not have to drift. You do not have to cool off spiritually. You do not have to be uncertain. You can have clarity. You can have confidence. And we want to hold this conference. We're going to bring in the foremost experts in biblical worldview, and we're going to hold a worldview training weekend. And what this is about is just reinforcing truth, but then how do you communicate it? How do you communicate with people who don't agree with you, who don't believe the Bible? And you would have the confidence that you can hold those conversations. See, if I'm going to speak for God, I need to know the truth. But if I'm going to speak the truth of God, I also need the heart of God. There is a tone that I take with the truth that I have. Daniel was chosen by four pagan kings to be the chief of staff. Imagine a president who is pagan who would choose a Bible-believing follower of Jesus as the chief of staff. It's just hard to imagine. And yet that's what Nebuchadnezzar did. Daniel was that person. So Daniel never compromised. Daniel never collapsed under the Babylonian pressure. They tried to brainwash him. They tried to turn him into a cultural Babylonian. But here we're talking today about Daniel who knew his God and did great exploits. We're talking about Daniel who's got a book in the Bible named after him, who by what he wrote allows us to actually understand the revelation that John was given on the Isle of Patmos. Daniel in the lion's den, it was a group of lions in his den where God could demonstrate his power because God was after changing the heart of the king. The king loved Daniel. The first to the lion's den the next day. Daniel, how is it with you? Because he loved Daniel. Daniel was the light. Daniel was the influence. He wasn't changed. He was the change agent. Come on, church. Let's make a difference. Let's shine the light. Let's live it out. So this cultural moment conference is going to be just that kind of training. We're going to have two sessions on Sunday night. Then another Incredible leader will come in and do two sessions on Monday night for every parent, for every student, for everybody. This is as important as it gets. I can't imagine navigating some of the conversations that we are all having right now without a reminder of exactly what the Bible says and how to communicate it. Grace and truth. Truth and tone. Grace, truth, express through the heart of Jesus. Jesus kneels down, goes eye to eye with a lady caught in the act of adultery. He looked in her eyes and says, your lifestyle is about to kill you but I don't condemn you. You got to change. Group of Pharisees around her ready to literally stone her to death. And Jesus confronted them and they dropped those stones and walked away. And Jesus looked at her and says, I don't condemn you, but now you need to change. Go and sin no more. Truth and tone.
we in this sense of rescue, I want you to know that it's not just about truth and tone, but it's about the ministries out there that provide grace, truth, and treatment that lead to transformation. Ministries like Adult and Teen Challenge, the Los Angeles Dream Center. Let me give you a list of what I mean by rescue. This, this massive mission, the Great Commission is our rescue mission. And that rescue is the reaching, bringing people into an environment of God's love in many situations, getting them into a safe environment, a safe home, like the Dream Center, like Teen Challenge, like the ministry in Colorado City. It's bringing them into treatment that can speak to where they are, where they've been, and the hope there is in where they can go. To unpack the layers of trauma and brokenness to speak effectively with anointing, just like we do in Mighty Oaks, just like we do in our sponsorship of the Foster Kids Camp, where they speak into the kind of challenges that they have. It leads to transformation, even some places offering the education and the sense of, of gift development and it's setting up a career path, the purpose of God. But one of the places that I'm excited for us to go back to and to make a major investment in is the House of Grace, and this is in Chiang Rai, Thailand. I'm gonna tell you about it, but first, let it be introduced by this video, and I think it'll help you to know that as you see these little girls and then you see the older girls, it's all the same people because it's the years that this ministry has reached, brought into God's love, an environment that was safe and transformative. Let's enjoy. Darkness. Darkness is what I think of when I think of a child lost in the terrible tunnel of sex trafficking. Darkness in the minds of those that prey upon her darkness in a life that will never find its destiny. Lost in the darkness of depravity and fear and loneliness and perhaps the darkest thing of all is hopelessness. The feeling that this is my life, this is all it will ever be and there is no destiny for me. Darkness. That's what Global Servants decided to attack. To us, it seemed like the answer to darkness had to be light. And we stepped in and believed that we could bring the light of God into little lives. This was the one thing that guided us from the very beginning. Big destinies for little girls. We thought it would bring joy and laughter and peace and hope and a family. House of Grace in Thailand and now in Ghana was a place where little girls could be safe, could find out who they were and who God meant them to be. That they could play games and run and be safe in their, in their family, that they would have sisters, hundreds of sisters, and relatives and friends and people in the United States, sponsors that cared for them. It was almost like they were adopted out of darkness and right straight into the light. In fact, I think that's probably as clear a view of House of Grace as I could say, from darkness into light sadness, and fear, and depression, and hopelessness, and despair into the bright light of God's destiny for little girls. This is the one thing I would say to every person who's ever sponsored a girl or given to make sure that House of Grace accomplishes its goal. You are the light of God. 
you have brought little girls from the darkness of despair into the light of a big destiny. You brought little girls, you brought little girls into the light of a big destiny. That was Dr. Mark Rutland who many years ago was in Thailand in one of the major cities and a man knocked on the door of his hotel room and he, had, he was holding the hand of a little 10 year old girl. He said to Dr. Rutland for 10 American dollars that little girl would serve him all night sexually. Dr. Rutland slammed the door. The man beat on the door again. He said, if the price is too high, I'll lower it to $5. He slammed the door, he called his wife. He said, I can't believe this. Couldn't sleep that night. And his thought was, God, something's got to be done. Somebody's got to do something. And God says, well, you do something. And that's where the House of Grace ministry was born, in his heart, on that night. And it opened in 1988. There were five girls that were brought in as the first group. Among the five was a little girl named Judapon. And Judapon is now, this is how long it's been going in the success, she is now the director. Let me show you her picture. This is Judapon, and if you, this is her family. Judapon and her husband, Allah, and Pastor Justin can tell you, Kelly can tell you, those that have been there. This is like one of the greatest couples you would ever meet in your life. The kind of commitment to Jesus and commitment to rescue. Let me show you the rescue center that they have. This is their campus, put, put the campus up if you will. This is the campus that these girls live, their cafeteria, you see the gymnasium. And then let's go back, show me a couple pictures of the girls that are there. The most incredible young ladies that are part of the Aka tribe. For whatever reason, the Thai government doesn't recognize them as citizens. There's extreme poverty in their villages, and so these human traffickers go, lie to the parents about giving them jobs and education, and these parents, they want better for their children, and in many of those cases, it was a complete lie, and they were taken into human sex trafficking. Well, the House of Grace steps in very near those tribal villages, and they step in and say, we're legitimate, we're gonna offer the gospel, we're gonna offer everything, education right up through university. Next picture of the students, if you will. This is Dr. Rutland interacting, next picture. This is the auditorium, and as you can see, it's long and narrow. Many of us have done ministry in that room, and it is way too small for what's going on. So I'm excited to announce that uh, end of March of 2023, we're going to take our first team of any of you who want to go to the House of Grace, and you're going to have, there's going to be one team that just ministers to these students all throughout the day, holding services at night, but then another team will do construction, and we're going to double the size of their auditorium, the place where the gospel is preached. That lower side, that's, that's part of the auditorium, and then we've shaded in the extension. This is going to be a major project, and for the years to come, it is going to serve the growing need. That's rescue. Reaching them, bringing them to a place that's safe of God's love for the transformational power of discipleship to happen. Can you praise God for the life change that we get to be a part of? Now, I just almost couldn't wait to tell you this. The Aka tribe, they don't have a Bible in their language until now because the first thing we're doing in 2023 is we're going to make the most major financial investment we possibly can, and we're going to get the Word of God, the Bible, translated and printed in the Aka language. Here we are with the Bible. They don't have a Bible, but they are going to get the Word of God because you believe in serving not just neighbors, but nations. It's not enough for us to enjoy the, the power of Bible engagement 
without thinking of those who don't even have a Bible. And we can do something about that. I want you to see that there's accelerated opportunity for us here at the assembly. And we're going to have to accelerate our generosity. We're going to need to be more generous than ever. And we are going to accelerate a harvest of people that need to know Jesus. And I believe there will be an acceleration of the power of God. Now, one of the great things we also do is we build churches in remote areas in Mexico where these pastors have reached people. I showed you one a week ago where a pastor had reached over 100 people. So he had a church because he had the Christians. He just didn't have a building. But we built him a church, and they're now able to have church in that amazing building. But there's another need. There's another pastor who has a church. He has the believers. He has no building. But the end of April, we're going to change that. We're going to go. We're going to build a church for those believers. And these are all ministries that are doing rescue. They're reaching people, proven. It's good ground to sow into. It's proven to be a place of God's love and discipleship, grace and truth. I'm going to close today. I want to invite Rose. Would you put your hands together as Rose joins me on the platform? Rose, come on up with me. And worship team, you can come back if you will. Come on, keep clapping. You're about to be amazed by this story. Welcome, Rose. I want to tell you Rose's story. Rose has lived here in Tulsa for many years. Rose is 23 now, but 24 now. When's your birthday? October the 6th. So, belated happy birthday. Rose was caught in drug addiction at a young age and human sex trafficking right here in our community. When Rose was 15, she had her first child. She continued in that place, in that situation, and ended up with no place to live, lived in cars, abandoned buildings, parks. Life was as dark and hopeless as it gets. In 2021, Anne Marie connected with Rose, and put your hands together. Anne Marie, just you come up right now. Well, come on, bring Lupe. Bring Lupe. Anne Marie, who is part of our church and such a soul winner, she's a rescuer. She connected with Rose, started telling Rose about Jesus. And in December last year, we did an outreach for uh, ladies in our community. And Rose and her child, Mia, and her sisters came to that outreach. Then in February, Rose gave birth to Lupe that you see here on the platform. But Rose was still in this place of addiction and forced prostitution, and it was desperate. And Amory said to Rose, let me take you to Colorado City into their ministry of God's love. It's a safe place, Rose. It's a place that will love you and teach you about Jesus. It's a, it, it can speak to the journey you've been on. And this picture you see is Rose and Mia in an airport, first time they were ever on an airplane, on their way to a place to be rescued by the power of grace and the power of truth. Rose was there from March the 9th until July. In the process of time, Rose's four sisters were able to get to this place of ministry. One of the burdens that Rose had in going, she goes, what about my sisters? Well, we were able to get them to Colorado City in the same ministry. Two of her sisters are still there receiving the ministry. Two are back. Would y'all come to the platform? I want you to put your hands together for their two sisters. Hey, Mia, come right over here. This is Mia, and I want to show you the picture of Rose and Mia when they got to Colorado City. This is the room, and there are about 75 rooms like this that you help pay to get renovated that would become the home 
of people like Rose and people like Mia while they're going through the grace and truth healing process. And Rose will tell you that when they got into that room, that's the first time that her and Mia had their own bed in five years. It had been just moving around from place to place. And now they were there. Next picture shows you some of the uh, therapy that they do. It is just incredible. Then I wanna show you the family picture because this is important for you to know. The ground that they're standing on, all of that was beautified and made a place where there could be counseling and reflection and prayer. And you paid 100% for everything that you see. It was the, the preparing of the ground, the sod, the planters, irrigation to the right. There is a greenhouse. You paid 100% for that entire greenhouse and the irrigation system. Not pictured is a huge playground system. You paid 100% for it. The first playground put back in that community after that evil man, Warren Jeffs, had took it all out. We had no idea in 2019 and in 2020 when we were going and giving, going and giving, that money left our hands, but it didn't leave our life. We had no idea that a family right in our own community would end up being served by the very place where you were willing to give and you were willing to go. Uh, you got to help me today. This is what rescue is all about. This is what grace will do right here. This is what a church can do that takes the Great Commission seriously. Hallelujah. This is what God can do when we give our best, when we give our all. Now, Karma Jensen, who is a great lady, you can remain standing, great lady in our congregation, and her daughter, how old was Katie? 18. 14. Katie was 14, started battling cancer, and through that intense battle, ended up going home to be with Jesus, and Karma's other daughters are older, and, you know, she empty nester. Well, when the two sisters came back to Tulsa, they had nowhere to live. And Karma said, I want to open my home. I want to take them in. And she is now being their mom and showing them the love of Jesus. Thank you, Karma. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Rose and Mia and Lupe, they now live with Scott and Anne Marie and they are just helping them to continue on this journey. Come on, I need us to praise God for the church. I need us to praise God for people that are about a rescue. It is about grace and truth and grace and transformation. Thank you so much. God bless you as you find your seats. Lord Jesus, grip us with vision today. Grip us with vision today. Vision. We are seeing in these stories the power of forgiveness, the power of light overcoming darkness, that everybody can have a fresh start, that anybody can have a fresh start, that anybody, somebody needs to hear this right now, because of the grace of God, no one is too far gone. No one, no one, no one is too far gone hear that it's something that you and i may not understand because grace is just that amazing grace is that magnificent that gives people like prodigals a fresh start if you need to be rescued today if you need a rescue in your own life would you just lift a hand right now and say i need a rescue in my life somebody here yeah Somebody, come on, just lift up and say, I need a rescue in my life. There are things that need to change. I see hands. Anybody else? So I, I need what God's done in Rose to happen in my life. I need rescue. Anybody? Say, that's me. How many here would say, I've got a son, I have a daughter, I, I have a family member that needs rescue? Would you just lift your hand right now? Yeah. I want to give an altar call. And if you lifted your hand saying, I, I've got a son, I've got a daughter that needs rescue, I want you to come as we sing. If you need that rescue in your own life, I want you to come. We're going to believe God 
We're going to believe God. We are going to not look at the circumstances they're in. We're going to look at the, the grace of Jesus. Are you ready? If you lifted your hand, come right now.